Here we go. Hi, everyone. All right, we'll hi there. Give it to, hi, we'll give it a couple seconds for everyone to enter from the waiting room. Okay, let's get started. Welcome everyone to Mindset Monday. I uh, hope you all stayed safe yesterday in that crazy windstorm. Today, we have the pleasure of having our social media guru back again to discuss Facebook for Realtors. Welcome, Sylvia Shalatsky from Droby Creative. Sylvia, go ahead and take it away. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you to Louise, Jennifer, and Ivana for putting these series together for us. Um, and today, we will be talking about Facebook. Um, and the main topics that we'll be covering is the overview of Facebook uh, business page, um, call to action buttons, uh, Facebook reviews, tips on posting on Facebook, uh, the insights that you can um, review on Facebook, hashtags, and we'll open it up for uh, questions and answers uh, towards the end. So in terms of Facebook, uh, it remains one of the largest uh, social media channels um, being used right now. And as of June 2019, there was an average amount of users, uh, about 1.6 billion uh, daily active users. So it's definitely a social media channel that you'd like, you'd want to utilize for real estate. Um, if you do not have a Facebook uh, business page, you'll definitely want to set one up. Uh, you'll probably want to set it up and not just use your personal profile for your real estate business. Um, what you will need though is a uh, personal profile book, uh, a page, uh, before you can set up a Facebook business page. Um, and what Facebook business pages allow you to do is obviously post your listing and real estate content. It allows you to book appointments and allow your prospects to uh, message you directly. It allows for the curation of reviews and run specific ads, paid ads on Facebook and Instagram that you can target your specific demographics for buyers and sellers that are out there in your area. Um, to create a Facebook page, if you haven't done so, you'll open up your personal profile and you'll hit the create a page button. And what will happen is a interface will appear that will allow you to and take you through each of the steps to create your Facebook page. So one of the first things that it'll ask you to enter is your Facebook page name. And you'll want to keep that consistent throughout um, all of your social media channels. So if uh, you are setting up Instagram and you're setting up other social media channels, you want to keep uh, the name uh, and the brand consistent throughout all of the different social channels and keep it similar to your website or brand name. Um, what I apologize, I think I advanced a little bit early. Um, once you fill out your page name, you will select a category. Uh, in this case, real estate or real estate agent um, are appropriate categories. You'll fill out your description. So info about yourself, the specific um, real estate that you uh, typically deal with and the locations. You'll wanna um, provide all those details to make it very apparent to the audience of what type of real estate and uh, what demographic that you typically um, are specialized in. And you'll want to add a profile photo. So professional photo um, is recommended to use um, on the business pages. Once those um, areas are filled out, uh, a really important visual element that um, people will look at within the first few seconds is the cover image 
that is part of your Facebook page. So you want to really think about what you'll want to integrate in there. Uh, some of the ideas is to highlight your personal brand, um, if your real estate brand. You may want to showcase a uh, beautiful listing um, or display um, a park view or an area of the location that you typically deal with. Uh, you could highlight your motto, quote, or branded hashtags within that image. And then don't feel intimidated to just keep that one image. Um, it is encouraged to change up that cover image from time to time, especially if you're going to be uh, using it to highlight specific maybe listings or previews of, of showcasing some of the listings that you're uh, currently involved in. Once those areas are filled in, you'll want to make sure your phone number, email, website, all of the contact information is properly filled in. Location, if you do have a set location to where your realty um, office is, uh, your hours of operation, if it pertains to, uh, to specific hours that uh, people will want to get a hold of you. Um, and privacy policy. If Remax has a specific privacy policy, there is an area to link, put a link into that. Um, it's especially if you're collecting people's information, it's good to provide them that privacy policy uh, within your business page. Um, and you can enter all that in. The more information you can fill out, when Facebook looks at that in their algorithm and want, the more you have filled out and the more of their uh, information you use, that is uh, very important. And two, for the end user that ends up going on your page, uh, they can easily contact you, easily know your hours and know your privacy policy if you're collecting their information to contact them. Uh, and the, one of the last key important things that you will fill out is your username. So this is the uh, actual name of the page. So this is something that, again, you'll want to make sure you fill out as closely as possible to your company name or your website name, to your brand. And you'll want to make sure that this is something that you're using, uh, if you can, identically on Instagram and other social channels. So that way it's easily remembered. Um, in my example, uh, just for the purposes of this demonstration, I wrote Team Shalatsky, which is my name, last name. So this is what I would use on my Instagram uh, as the hash uh, as the main uh, username. Um, that way, you'll want to incorporate that in your email signature, on your business cards, um, print media, anywhere where you're advertising your social channels. Easily remembered because um, the branding is consistent throughout all the social channels. Um, a little tip, even though you're not going to be using your personal profile per se for your business, it's still a good idea to link your Facebook business page to your personal profile because friends and family will know how to easily contact you if they need a realtor. And also friends of friends who are following who may see your public profile or that instant page on your personal profile can see that the industry that you're involved in. So um, the area that this will appear is under intro on the new layout of the Facebook personal page. And it's under the about us section. So where you're going to list all the different education or work uh, previous work that you might um, enter in. This is where you'll want to link your personal or your uh, Facebook page. And what happens is when a person is on your page and they hover over that, they see the links and a little blurb from your Facebook page. So it's another way to ex uh, exposure for your Facebook page. And to enter that in on your personal profile, you're going to click on the about us section on your personal profile you're going to hit work and education and the fields that will appear will be to add a new work place so when you start entering in your facebook page name under company it will give you um, in a drop down all the different options you'll find your new facebook page that you've created or that you have existing and you'll select that you will click 
to add that job to your personal profile, click done. And you're going to make sure that it's set to public view. So to know whether you have it set to public view is you'll see a little globe next to your new entry. And if it's not a globe, you'll click on that little icon that you see and you change it to the globe, which is a public profile. And that allows anyone that's maybe not even following you personally, that lands on your page somehow to see your latest work or your latest Facebook page that you're associated with. So it's a good thing to add your Facebook page to your personal profile as just another way to advertise um, your brand. So jumping back to our Facebook page, as we've set up our Facebook page, we filled out all the information, we've selected our username. Now we're going to finish off by adding a call to action button. And um, the call to action button just allows people to be directed to either your website, to book an appointment or to contact you directly. Um, you'll definitely want to utilize that. Uh, so even if you don't have a website page, you, they, you can add a call now button or contact us or send a message, which will send a message to your messenger. A uh, very useful button. It's an easy way for a person that lands on your page to easily find you and connect with you. So uh, Facebook has probably almost 20 different options you can link to. Obviously the ones that will pertain to you will be more so book now, call now, or contact us, learn more, or send a message. So you'll definitely want to enable one of those buttons. Now, if you do not currently have a scheduling tool or a Facebook or a website page that they can connect to, but you do wanna take some appointments, Facebook does allow you to set up appointments uh, within your business page. So to do that, you are going to click on your uh, call to action button and you're going to end up selecting um, book now. And then it'll give you the option to add appointments on Facebook. And this is a great uh, way to set up uh, appointments. Again, if you don't have a scheduling tool, the only thing to keep in mind is uh, unfortunately currently on Facebook, it does not sync up with your calendar. If you're using an Outlook or Google calendar, uh, there isn't that syncing uh, with your Facebook page. So you would have to make sure you keep track of those appointments. But once uh, you do set up appointments on Facebook and you click on that option, uh, what will happen is it will show you an availability calendar and therefore you can select different days that you might be available, the times that uh, you're available for appointments, maybe to uh, talk to potential uh, buyers or sellers. Uh, and once you've selected all the different times that you're available throughout the week um, and you click the next button, um, those appointments are ready. So now if someone clicks on the book now button on your Facebook page, they will see the, um, this week what days you're available, what times you're available, and they can click on that time and Facebook notifications will uh, message you to let you know that there is a person interested in an appointment with you and you can follow up with them at that point. One of the other wonderful things that Facebook does allow you to do, uh, Facebook uh, business page, is it allows um, your current, past and uh, future clients to leave reviews. And 84% of people online uh, trust reviews like they would a personal recommendation. So it's very important to have that feature enabled. Um, and as you're dealing with your clients, um, once you've uh, found them a home or sold their home and they've had a great experience, ask them to leave reviews on your Facebook page. This also gives you sort of brownie points with Facebook algorithm and the more engagement that happens on your page, um, you'll end up adding to that algorithm and you're, uh, you're building that trust with Facebook. 
Um, one of the questions that I get asked is what happens when I get bad reviews or spam reviews, reviews that aren't real? Can I delete them? Unfortunately, right now, um, the only thing you can do if it's a written review and it's a negative review, you can report it to Facebook and they'll do some investigating. Now, depending on how busy they are and what's going on in the world, it takes quite a bit of time for them to get back to you. Um, sometimes it's an algorithm that kind of looks through things, but what happens is if they can deem that this is in fact a fake review, they will take it down. But chances that they take it down are very slim at times. So what I always recommend to clients is definitely respond to the person. If you know this is a real person and you've dealt with them, let them know, um, you know, unfortunately, I'm, you know, we apologize that you've had this experience. I'd like to personally message you to resolve this. And hopefully you can take this offline and resolve it. And they will change that review or take it down. Um, if the person is false or fake, uh, definitely leave a nice general message saying, unfortunately, we don't recall having you as a client, you know, write something general. And most people know if they see quite a bit of great reviews and this one sort of off review, um, fake reviews do happen. So people do understand that. Um, if they leave you stars, but no comments, unfortunately, those reports or those reviews can't be taken down or reported. But again, like I mentioned, what you're trying to do is get enough really good reviews that if there is a false or fake one review, people tend to know that that happens. And I wouldn't put too much weight on it, but definitely do leave a general response, just letting people know that you are aware of this and you are responding to it. Um, to enable reviews, what you will do is go into your page settings, click on templates and tabs, click on reviews, and make sure they're turned on. Um, and like I mentioned, you can't delete them, but you can report them. And hopefully people, um, you know, in know enough and get you'll get enough referrals that the odd one or so reviews that hopefully won't happen, but if they do, um, I wouldn't put too, too much weight on it. Some tips on posting. Um, when you are on Facebook, uh, the general rules I would recommend are uh, post daily if you can. Be consistent with that posting. So if you are posting one time a day or twice a day, um, try to keep that number um, the same on a daily basis. Or if you're posting three times a week, try to keep that consistency. Um, don't let your account look inactive. Uh, so what I recommend if you are going to be sticking, sticking to posting one or two times a day, but you know that there is a very busy period coming up, there are scheduling tools you can use to schedule in some industry related content or some listings that may be coming up that you know, or little previews of listings or open houses. Um, one of the very uh, easily one that you can access is Facebook Creator Studio. It's right inside Facebook and you can schedule your posts um, on days where you know you can't physically post them yourselves. So you can draft up certain posts. What you don't want to happen is you're very active for a couple of weeks then you take a week or two off and then it looks like you're not active on your account anymore. Uh, people may take that as a negative thing that you're not currently busy, maybe that you're not working. So you want to keep that consistency either through your daily live posts or by scheduling them accordingly. Some ideas for Facebook posting. Um, the very obvious one would be to post your listings. Um, add photos or videos wherever possible. Uh, people tend to interact and engage with visuals, especially videos, um, more often than just content. Uh, you'll want to share community news, maybe about events um, around the area um, that are going on, maybe uh, certain things about the schools or um, you know, the amenities that are around the community that you are responsible for. Uh, post some fun or interesting polling questions, 
some valuable tips uh, that homeowners, sellers, or buyers might be interested in and share, uh, you know, did you know information from maybe uh, brokers or the marketplace uh, that's happening uh, regarding that area? Uh, one of the perfect uh, posts that you can uh, post on Facebook is photo posts. Uh, what we found is that most people uh, want to know about the exterior of the home. The interior usually comes second. Um, they usually do love to know um, some of the main highlighted features. So maybe little teasers. Um, in this example, I have beautiful low maintenance perennial gardens. So maybe little teasers for a listing that's coming up. Use a collage of images. Um, and whenever possible, using a professional photographer or just uh, you know some filters on some of those images um, just to kind of highlight that property. And floor plans, uh, pre-built floor plans for new home developments or even ones that are currently existing, but just showing the um, potential home buyer um, you know, what they can look forward to. Um, in terms of video posts, um, what we found is that 48% more views um, happen with video posts than static images. So you have about three seconds to catch that person's attention. And what is a good idea is to use a custom thumbnail. And by thumbnail, it's that introductory image that happens on that video. Um, because a lot of times the videos don't play automatically. So what you'll want to do is to capture that attention is when you're uploading or when you're having someone upload that video to Facebook, you have the ability to um, find a frame from the video that is the most exciting, maybe you think to the viewer, or you can upload a custom static image, possibly with overlays. So highlighting maybe the area or any amenities on the property. Um, and having that to be that static image before they play the video. And what I found uh, based on insights and some research is that videos that are uploaded directly to Facebook tend to perform a little better than just providing a link to a YouTube video. So when they're uploaded, and I know sometimes that's not possible, maybe the video is really long or it's the videographer posted on, on a uh, YouTube page and you're just being provided the link. But if you do have the ability to, to have that um, video uploaded to Facebook directly and also to Instagram, when we go over the Instagram session, um, it definitely has a better engagement than just the link to the video. Um, some video tips when you are uploading your video to YouTube um, or even Facebook directly, you'll want to add a descriptive title. So something that will catch their attention. Um, you'll want to experiment with long and short copy. So sometimes you'll want to just put quick bullet points to the amenities, number of bedrooms, uh, you know, what the property has to offer. Sometimes you'll get into a little bit more detail and you'll definitely want to provide the call to action at least once in the copy. And that would be to link to either your website um, where they can view further, maybe 360 video or how they can contact you. Something of what is the next step they need to take to see that property. Uh, I definitely encourage using hashtags. So there is an area in the video when you're uploading it to YouTube to add key words. Um, I would definitely encourage to put real estate, rental listing, um, home for sale. There's different listings already there. Select uh, from some or one of them and use insights to understand the video performance. So once you've had an opportunity to upload and post a few videos, see how they're doing, see what's worked. Uh, do, is the video with, or sometimes you might even post the same video a few times, 
but some with short copy, some with longer copy. See what is getting you more engagement. How long are the individuals interacting with the video? How are they viewing the entire thing? Are they exiting out after 30 seconds? Um, there are insights that are provided within Facebook that will let you know these details. So um, under insights on your Facebook page, it will give you some great details as to within a week span, how many people have engaged with your page uh, in terms of videos, how many people viewed the videos, did they view it for three seconds, 30 seconds, how much are they engaging with it and for how long. Uh, these are very important things and a lot of people tend to not view them, but if you're going to be posting more of these listings, uh, it's very good to take a look at what is working and what is not. What are the times that people are engaging with um, online with your page um, and organically versus paid. Uh, so that way you can get more organic posts up there without having to pay all the time to be seen. So um, insights are going to be very important as you start getting more and more into uh, posting on your social channels. One of the other things that's really great to look out for is a little feature on Facebook called pages to watch. So what happens here is if you'll go into your insights, there's an area called pages to watch and it will give you some suggestions, but what you can do here is add some of your competition in here or people that you know are successful online in the real estate business. And you can follow to see how they are doing on a week to week basis. You don't have to worry. None of them will know you're adding them to this watch list. But the great thing about it here is you can kind of see how many posts they've done during a week and how many people have engaged throughout that week. So if there is a particular competitor that is doing significantly well and they're getting really great engagement rates, you'll want to have a look at this, click on their page and see what they're doing. See the types of posts that they're posting, which of their posts are getting really great engagements. And let's not reinvent the wheel. You can use some of those tips and tricks, maybe some of the hashtags that they're using, the way they're uh, incorporating some of their imagery, some of their posts, and kind of use some of that, those tools and ideas on your posts. So this is a great, tool to use to see and sort of compare yourself and see how often they're posting and what they're posting and what types of engagements they're getting. Um, one of the biggest things that people um, ask about is real estate hashtags, hashtags in general. Um, which ones should I use? How do I use them? And uh, you know, what are the do's and don'ts? Um, and basically hashtags just allow people to easily kind of find the different types of topics that they're looking for. So um, what you'll want to know uh, mainly uh, as a general rule is when creating hashtags, you don't want to leave any spaces between the words. So an example, Ontario Realtor, no spaces. Uh, you don't want to use any punctuations in your hashtags and you don't want to use too many. So you don't want your whole copy in your post to consist of hashtags just because you want to hit all those target keywords. Less is definitely more. And you'll want to know how many to use for which social media channel. So not all of them um, are equal. So you don't want to use the exact same amount in Facebook as you do on Instagram as you do somewhere else. So one of the things that um, I've gone over is uh, I've taken a look at some research uh, on Facebook related to hashtags. And over the last couple of years, um, a company called Social Bakers has done some investigation on it. And what they found is using one hashtag versus no hashtags at all on your Facebook post um, gives better engagement results on posts. And the minute you add 10 or more hashtags, um, your engagement drops off um, quite a bit. 
And what they found is the optimal results on Facebook is using one to three hashtags. Anything kind of over three hashtags on Facebook really decrease the engagement on those posts. So uh, what you'll want to do is to come up with one to three hashtags to use. Now you don't want to use those same exact hashtags every single time necessarily. And um, you might say, well, what kind of hashtags should I use? There's kind of three categories that I would say um, in terms of Facebook that I would use. And those are the top sort of trending real estate hashtags, the very sort of general ones, real estate, realtor, just listed, for sale, home for sale, ones like that that are just um, sort of the top trending ones. There's a little bit more specific agent specific hashtags. So it might involve things like listing agent, um, commercial real estate, uh, realtor office, if you were talking um, on a post, something related to your um, realtor office. And then there's customized and branded hashtags. So these are hashtags that are going to drill down more to your area, uh, targeted neighborhood, possibly your uh, brokerage name, um, you're targeting your city, or even maybe the property that you're listing. So what you'll wanna do is start creating a list for those top trending hashtags, your real estate agent hashtags, and your customized branded hashtags, and have those um, kind of saved and use and try those different ones. And from those, you're going to look at your insights, you're gonna look at your competitors, you're gonna kind of see which ones are working um, for you. If you're going to use kind of one to three, I would recommend including a top sort of trending hashtag and using at least one custom branded hashtag uh, to include um, on your posts for Facebook. Um, if you're absolutely brand new to hashtags and you have no idea kind of where to start, hashtag generators are a great tool to use. Um, I tend to use sometimes just if it's something new or it's a new client I'm working with, um, alt-hashtag.com. You'll put in the general sort of uh, industry or product that you're using in your case, real estate, and it will generate the 30 top trending hashtags within that sort of industry or topic that I have um, was searching for. Things to remember about that. Just because it's giving you the 30, obviously you're not going to use all 30 on your Facebook page. Uh, it's 30 because it tends to um, relate to Instagram, which allows you 30 hashtags. Um, but you don't necessarily want to use the most top trending hashtags. In this case, it's showing me real estate NYC. Obviously, I'm not going to be selling homes in the New York area, but um, so that's not going to apply. And by using the most uh, top trending hashtag is not necessarily the best, um, but this will give you an idea kind of the words or what is trending out there. Again, you'll want to start using some of your branded hashtags. So those start becoming more and more familiar and trending within your area as people are, are um, searching for specifics. But again, this is a great uh, area to start. Um, and again, I recommend looking at your competitors, looking at your colleagues, seeing what they're doing, uh, seeing what uh, different realtors in your area are using and just customizing those hashtags slightly to uh, fit into your areas. So some of the things that I want you to kind of remember uh, for Facebook is um, make sure you have a very good and well-designed cover image. So that's the most important visual people will see right when they land on your page. Optimize your page by filling out everything possible on the page down to the privacy policy, like I mentioned. Try to use a username that matches your brand as closely as possible. So that way your website, your all your social channels, um, everything is branded uh, to the same or as close as possible uh, username and is easily remembered. 
enable your call to action button, um, whether it's for appointments, contacts, learn more information and link it to the appropriate pages, whether that's your website, um, a scheduling tool or to message you directly. Enable reviews. I wouldn't worry about that possible bad review that you may get. I think as you're building up your clientele, they're leaving great reviews. Um, if there is that one bad one, I wouldn't put too much weight on it. Um, in your videos, uh, add informative copy and a relevant and really nice designed thumbnail where possible. That'll catch the user's attention in the newsfeed. And in terms of hashtags, remember less is more. So using one, optimally, up to three hashtags on a Facebook post is all you need. So really, uh, you know, getting the top trending 30 hashtags and trying to put those in um, is not the best um, thing to do. Um, always start off with a little bit less. You can always add more and you can really review your posts in the insights. And that will give you a lot of information on what's working and what's not. And I will leave it up for any questions that you may have. So I'm going to let Louise let me know. Okay. If um, I, I didn't see if there were any questions being typed in, but you can let me know if there are any. Perfect. There is a, one that I received directly. Is there a way to create and send a link to a client on the Facebook platform which requests a review? Is there a link? Um, a way to create one. Is there a way to create one? Yeah, so it would just be the link to your Facebook page and then they can click on review right when they're in their, in your Facebook page. Okay, so send out a link. Yeah, like Google My Business has a link that you can take them right to a review, review section. On Facebook, it would just be your Facebook page link and you can just ask them within that email if you can go into my Facebook page, click on reviews and they can leave a review that way. All right. Um, there's also a question, where does a person go for technical support on Facebook? So uh, Wayne, uh, when loading a video to his personal page from his smartphone, Facebook wouldn't let him share it from the personal page to the business page. Is there a setting anywhere? Okay, so, um, so he's trying to load a video from his personal profile onto his Facebook page. The first thing I would check is the settings, the privacy settings on that video on his profile. So what you may have is in your privacy settings on your personal profile, you may have that you are only allowing shares with friends or friends of friends. It's not public. So the, one of the first things you'll want to check is, is that video set to public? If it's still not letting you share it, I'd have to kind of see more of what's being done there. But um, there, I'm going to put a couple of support links to sharing videos on the our, our Facebook group page that might help. But the very first thing I would check is the privacy settings on your personal profile when it comes to sharing some of your posts or content, because it sounds like that might be the, the issue right there. Okay, thank you. And Wayne, go ahead. If you haven't already joined our private Facebook group, um, go ahead and, and, and look at that. There is a link right in the chat box. Um, there's a lot of interaction that does take place on that platform, which is, and Sylvia is happy to answer any questions as well. Um, now, we did have a, a question that was answered by Jennifer, but I think it is a, a common question. Is there an easy way to share um, or to move your contacts from your personal profile to your business page? Um, when you say, oh, like the followers? Yes. So, um, yeah, I think the old, you can't just move them yourself. They have to actually like or follow your Facebook page. So the first thing I would do is if you were using your personal profile, 
as a business page first before you've created an actual business page. I would post on that personal profile, a little post saying, I've moved everything over. Here's the link, please follow, or please like my new page. That would be the easiest. Um, explain that you will be pausing any future sort of posts on this page and move everything over that you can physically in terms of content. Uh, but you can't physically do anything um, to move over personal contacts into a Facebook page. They physically have to like it themselves. If you have two existing Facebook pages and you needed to merge them, there is a merge option in Facebook. There are some stipulations. They, you do have to prove you're the owner of both. They have to be very close in nature. Um, it, it, Facebook's very picky, making sure that it does look like it's the same brand. And you'll have to let them know there's a process and I can leave a link on the Facebook group. Uh, you'll have to go through a process to tell them this is the one I'd like to link to this one and they'll merge the followers into the one Facebook page if they approve it. But um, it's not an easy process. Facebook certainly does not make it a very easy process, but there is a way to merge two business accounts but definitely not a way that you can merge your personal followers with your Facebook page without asking them. Okay, thank you. And one other question. Do some call to actions work better than the other in your experience? For example, uh, a website link versus a call us button. Um, I personally have uh, gotten feedback that the instant um, call to or message me like so you want it to uh, link to a phone number and call or get a direct message uh, what happens if people end up being redirected to a website page you could lose them so having them instantly contact you with a call or a message uh, definitely tends to get better responses uh, I think if people click on that button, they're looking for almost instant connection with you. They can always look up your Facebook page or your website page when they have time or when they're not interested maybe at the moment. But when they wanna contact you, I definitely would link it either to a call now button or to a direct message button. Perfect, thank you. Jennifer, do you see anything in the chat box that we've missed? Uh, yes, Wayne Ashley has another really great one. Um, group versus page. Um, to be honest, it, both are great. So I, I definitely think having a uh, the business page is a must, but then you can create a group. Um, there are different types of groups you can create, you know, whether it's the community group where you're going to share a lot of things or a realtor group, you can then connect your group to the Facebook page. Um, so that way people land on your page, they can become part of that group. Um, I still think you can um, benefit from both. So having both is great. Uh, there's been a few realtors that I know that have done really well by having and building on groups because they have that instant community that when a new listing comes out they're sharing that information with that group that exclusive group and that group you know then shares it with their communities um but in terms of running ads and um just having that business presence facebook page still kind of trumps the group all right I think that's it for now. Um, again, please join or ask to join our private Facebook group because Sylvia will be active on it until all of our four sessions are in. Uh, so next week, we are going to be having our business planning for 2021. Then Sylvia will be back the following week with Instagram for Realtors. So um, go ahead and join the Facebook group if you're not already a member and uh, post your questions or concerns there. And uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks, Sylvia. Thank you, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank you.